Okay, so I wanted to make my second video on my cancer story. Um, so back in 2009, in July, I um, used to run a lot, and one day coming from running, I found out that, um, not found out, I uh, noticed that I had a weird pain in my left big toe. So I kind of ignored the pain. Um, I just thought it was probably from you know, running a lot and I probably pulled like a small muscle or something in my toe or maybe had like a stress fracture of some sort and um, I just iced it and left it alone. So the next day, um, you know, I ran again and I've noticed that the pain was getting worse and this pain that I'm talking about is not like any other pain. It was like a weird warming type of sensation. It's kind of hard to explain. It's something I've never felt before. So... Um, after, you know, just, I guess, going with my gut feeling and, you know, um, just sensing that it was something bigger than what I thought, um, I decided to go to the emergency room one day because it kind of freaked me out. So I went to the emergency room, got an x-ray of my toe over my left foot, and the x-ray tech said that, um, you know, everything was fine, my bone actually looks pretty healthy, so I had nothing to worry about. I mean, when he told me that, in the back of my head, I was just thinking, like, there has to be something wrong because, you know, um, I'm not going through this pain for no reason at all. So I decided to make an appointment with my primary care doctor. And um, after, you know, talking to her, she decided to schedule me for a CT, or first it was a bone scan, then it was... Then after the bone scan, um, you know, the results came back kind of fuzzy, so they couldn't determine anything with the bone scan. So then they did the MRI, and they saw something, a mass in my toe with the MRI, and then they uh, did a CT scan, and then they found that there was um, a mass of something, a, a tumor, in my toe. So I ended up getting an appointment with a specialist in... Um, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and that was about an hour drive from my house. And once I pulled into like the the parking area, in big letters, you can see the name of the ho well. I'm not going to say the name of the hospital, but um, part of the hospital name is Cancer Center. And I just felt like deep down in my gut that there was something I knew. I felt like that was a sign preparing me for the for the worst, just to prepare me for what's coming up. So um, the specialist that I saw, he's actually ranked like the number one, um, uh, what is it called, um, orthopedic surgeon in the Midwest region. So he saw my CT slides and told me that uh, he thinks that it's a benign tumor, I have nothing to worry about, but just to be 100% sure, he wanted to take a biopsy. So we were schedu scheduled to do the biopsy um, November, 20, November 23rd, 2009, a day before my birthday. So we did the biopsy, um, and... My doctor, I realized that it was actually cancer from the biopsy. So after the, in the post-operating -oper room, I wake up from my surgery and saw that he was there with his resident and his um, uh, physician assistant. And they were just all in the room and, you know, he t basically told me I had cancer. And when he told me that, I was just completely shocked and confused because I just didn't know what was going to come next after that. I didn't know, like, I guess I didn't fully process everything. So, I mean, my first reaction was to cry, and that's what I did. Because, I mean, when you hear the word cancer, that's it kind of freaks you out. So, after I was officially diagnosed with cancer, um, my doctor told me that he sent a culture of my tumor to a specialist, um, an oncologist, who um, is a pretty good oncologist over in New Jersey, I think. I think. Um, somewhere on the East Coast. Um, and then, uh, it, I guess to diagnose a, the exact type of cancer that I had. So, later it came back that I had 
this type of cancer called pleomorphic leomyel leomyosarcoma, which is a very rare cancer. It um, is pretty much resistant against chemotherapy and radiation therapy. And the best way of curing, not curing, but the best way of um, getting rid of the, the cancer cells is to extract the, the, the tumor mass, to extract it from the body. So, um, uh, my doctor suggested that I, I should get an amputation of my left foot. And that kind of freaked me out. I was going back and forth doing my research, thinking of all the things, all of the other possibilities that I could, you know, have. Um, and I got a, a second opinion, even though this doctor was ranked number one in the Midwest, I got a second opinion from a doctor in Chicago and he just basically told me the same thing. And gave me another option of a ray amputation. And the ray amputation is just having your that part of the body that is a f infected with the cancer. So it would be my toe that would just have the amputation instead of my whole foot. So I was thinking like, oh, well, yeah, of course I'll just do that. I can still have a foot, you know, and just, they can just remove my toe. So I went back to my specialist in Wisconsin and uh, gotta move this around and um, he was telling me well, like yeah you can that's an option but you will not be as active as you were before just think about it like when you have your toe your pinky toe and your big toe helps your, with your balance so if I didn't have my big toe he told me that I would just be walking with the cane for the rest of my life and there's no way possible that I would ever be active for the rest of my life and he told me the amputation is the best decision that I can make because I can wear a prosthetic limb and I can still be like as active as I was before. I was still kind of freaked out with the amputation but you know every solution after thinking of other ways to you know um, other surgeries like it just let me back to getting an amputation so I decided to do the amputation route. So about a month later, I was scheduled for my surgery because my doctor told me that I needed to make my decision pretty quick because the cancer that I had was pretty aggressive and um, like we shouldn't wait very long to um, make a decision. So of course I decided to get the amputation. So December 30th, 2009, I had my amputation of my foot. And, uh, yeah, my biggest fear was waking up and, like, I guess freaking out that I lost my foot. That was my biggest, biggest fear, like, that I wasn't going to accept it and, you know, I was going to freak out and whatever. But I guess with all the, co the, 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 um, all of the medicine that I was on, I just didn't care. Like, I felt really good. I was just you know, being a fatty, ordering a bunch of food from the hospital, which was pretty good food, and, um, just, I guess just, um, just accept, kind of accepting what was, um, you know, what was going on my life, cha I mean, being an amputee changes your life completely, um, just everything that you do is just, I mean, I'm, I don't solely think of my leg, but it definitely changes your life, um, and it's, just a completely different lifestyle um, but that's just like the story of my amputation um, and my surgery and my cancer story just in a nutshell but I do want to make another video on how I felt afterwards the depression the insecurities that I've been feeling um, just a bunch of like a, a bunch of emotions that I've gone through after the amputation um, um, yeah, so that's I'm going to do that in another video, the third video I'm going to make, uh, because that one is like crazy, and I will explain everything in that one. So I guess if you guys have any questions or anything, um, just leave a comment or inbox me, and I'll answer your questions. Um, feel free to, ans to ask anything. I'm pretty open with the whole cancer thing. In the beginning, I was kind of like... I could not talk about that I had cancer or I have cancer before because I would cry every single time I would talk to someone. Um, the day after 
the day after my surgery I had to wake up I used to babysit and I had to wake up well after I woke up I called the woman that I was sitting for it and I told her I was like I can't sit for you anymore because I have cancer and you know and I just couldn't I tried to hold it in but I couldn't and I kind of, I really missed that family because the little boy that I was sitting for you know I felt like he was my own I loved him so much but you know sometimes you got to take care of yourself and you got to put yourself first but um like I said before I will make another video on I guess the emotional um, roller coaster that I've gone on after the amputation and um, yeah just life and then life after that and I will go into um, someone asked me to do a video on like my workout routine and I'll do that later um, but yeah there's gonna be a bunch of videos coming up in the near future okay thanks for watching